Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff Mixing Course. This course is 15 lessons long, and in these 15 lessons, you will learn to mix a whole track from start to end using only Ableton Live's own stock devices. What you will learn is a mixing workflow that works for any type of genre and any type of song, the key concepts of mixing, awesome techniques, and ways to apply the Ableton Live stock devices into your mix, as well as some fun tips and tricks. While watching this course, you can actually practice and do exactly what I'm doing in the videos using a song that I have created just for this course. You can download the stems and Ableton Live practice session from the link down below. No previous mixing experience needed. I will explain everything to you and you can get started with your mixing. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified every single time I post a new video for this course. Let's get started with mixing. <laughs> so this episode is about audio FX chains that can make you super creative with mixing, but also learning to do these will really help you to understand how devices actually work on the channels, but also speed up your workflow. Also, thanks so much for DistroKid for sponsoring this mixing course. DistroKid is a distribution company that I personally use to publish all my music. They also have lots of cool free services that are part of the deal. So example, one of them is Splits that allows you to split all the income fairly between all the people you have collaborated in the track. So it's really, really cool for that. So in the end of this video, I'm showing you how that works and tell you a little bit about that but now let's get into this tutorial and let's talk about audio ethic chains okay 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 so audio effects chaining so we learned about compressors we learned about eqs we have them here on our channels now we need to talk about a little bit that we already covered a tiny bit, but we're going to talk about the arrangement of these plugins devices because they are able to live devices and plugins are external stuff that you put in. Anyhow, many people ask me when they start producing or mixing, what does it matter in which order do you put the devices in? It matters because you know what we talked about gain staging in many weeks ago <laughs> in this course, we talked about gain staging. So it's the same thing. The signal goes from left to right, to right, to right to the master. So we have a chain of things that happen. It comes to the sound source. It goes to this device view and we have a chain of things that's gonna happen. It's gonna go first, EQ'd, compressed, and then the EQ'd and compressed signal is gonna go to the saturator. So this will receive a completely different type of signal what the original was, because it goes from one to another to another. So it's called a chain. Woohoo! Keep in mind, if you are thinking, should the compressor be first before EQ, EQ before compressor, the point is, how is the other one affecting the other? Left to right. EQ may be first because you're un uh, cutting away unwanted frequencies because then you don't want to compress the unwanted frequencies and then cut them. So it just makes more sense to be put an EQ first, then compress, and then add maybe another EQ after it. And also just watch this whole course because everything will make more sense if you just watch every single video of this course. And what more you learn mixing, you can start doing your own chains. If you're not really sure where to start, you can go to utilities and from there, audio effect rack, okay? From audio effect rack, if you go to this area here, it already gives a lot of different options. I have a lot of presets I already made by myself. You can find them on my Patreon. I give them free for my Patreon channel actually, but also there are different ones that are made by Ableton. So there's mixing and mastering ones. For so example, there's a channel kick, channel snare, drum bus, which means a drum group track like this. So you can actually go and add example the drum bus there to the drum bus. And then we can just have a look what's in there. Open up this. And what we can see here is that it has two devices next to each other. So this one has one chain and it has pedal and drum bus. And then all these controls be mapped to these controls here. So you can use these to control all the devices 
that are in the chain. So why do you do want this? Well, you might want it because you have a certain chain that you use a lot on your vocals, on your kick, on your drums, on your synths. You have similar stuff that you always use. So it's easier just to create this chain for yourself and then you can just save it and use it always over again. So that's one reason. So on the return track in the last video, I put a reverb and a compressor on a return track because I wanted to compress a reverb. So it's basically parallel compression with the reverb happening same time. So example, I could select both of them, holding down shift, press command G, or you go here and right click and group. Okay, so now what's happened is that they have been put into an audio effect rack. It's the same thing as you would go to utilities and drag empty audio effect racked here and then just drag these effects into the empty audio effect rack. Same thing, same thing. What we can do now is that we can open these up here, especially the first one and the bottom two. So the first one shows the macros, the second one shows the sh chains, and the third one sh shows the what's in the chains. But we could also add extra chains. There's so much we can do here. We can add a create a chain. We can create, so this is a uh, Reeve comp. Or we can have, example, add uh, echo into the other one. So another way is that we can click here a chain. There we go. And now I need to put this on. We can do this kind of cool trick. I go here and I extend this blue block here like that. And then I go to this one and I control this blue block. Okay. Then there's this light blue one that I take from left to right and on the other one I take it from right to left. Okay, so we created this zigzag and now I click map and I click this green area here and I go to the macro and I have now mapped this green area into the macro one. Stay with me if this confuses you because now what I can do is I can go between these two effects. So if I go to the complete left, it's only playing the, the echo. And if I go completely to the right, it plays compressed reverb. So now it allows me to actually choose where do I want to, do I want to mix it? Do I want to be in the middle? Or do I want to have more echo? Or do I want to have more reverb? That is so cool. So we can actually use it creatively to choose what we want, but also we can then we can close these two tabs here and we can then just save this as a preset and it goes here and it goes uh, return parallel FX chain example. In Ableton Live 11, there's a cool fu function because I can only just have one macro in front of me like that. So now it's an echo. You give me, give me, give me. And now it's in a reverb with the compressed. And now it's both. A little bit more reverb, which sounds actually really cool. Which I actually prefer that. So this means that next time we are faster when we mix. I like the fact that I have an EQ, compressor, saturator, um, possibly other effects as well, chorus, maybe flanger, another EQ. This one, the first one ju was just to cut away all unnecessary frequencies. Then we are compressing the signal that doesn't have any of the unnecessary frequencies. Then we're saturating the clean signal that we already cleaned here. Then we are adding some FX to it. And now this one, we can just uh, add resonance to some of the signals that we feel like the vocal needs even more. me and for me, example, I usually like vocal uh, resonated a little bit between five to eight kilohertz, especially the main one. I don't know, somehow, especially, uh, depends of the vocal, but my vocal personally, which this is my vocal, um, I like it somehow a little bit added resonance around here. Will you tell me? So this is with it and without. Will you tell me if you need me? 
just add a little bit clear clearing clearing clarity clarity <laughs> you can see there's just a lot of stuff here and you know i might want to use this chain again one day so i hold down shift i go here command or control g we're grouping them all and now i can also collapse them all i can just save it like this double click from the top bar and it collapses them and now how much nicer it looks like this I have a whole video of showing how to create this and how to do the mapping in more detail. So I'm going to link that down below. Um, but even if you want to do very simple mapping, like we did before, I go to the map and I put the dry width of compressor, dry width of saturator, dry width of chorus, dry width of phaser. And we just leave the EQ like that. So example, just these four, I just delete, take off all the unnecessary macros and collapse these again. I give them a nice color like this. There we go and take that away. And there we go. We have a beautiful vocal chain that I can just vocal chain that I can just add every single time when I create a new vocal and it's ready here. So it's just going to make my workflow so much faster. Or if there's a lot of different vocals, I can copy paste that and put that on other tracks as well if I want. Okay. In the next video, we're going to be talking about automation in mixing. Uh, plenty of to talk about that. Hey, hey. So I just want to tell you a little bit about DistroKid splits. It's not like you don't not learn to do splits, but it's a service where you can split all the revenue, um, all the percentage, all that with all the people that you're collaborating with because especially now like 2020 2021 we started to collaborate with people even more and more and more then sometimes it can be a bit messy because you're like how do i actually get everything paid you know 50 percent for that person and 50 percent for me but how do i get that all sorted out well you go to your district Hit account and on the top bar there there is splits so basically automatically splits payments to your collaborators super easy to do so you're going to select the track which you collaborated with with somebody else so you go select that then you just go to next so example if i compose this with uh, 50 and 50 with somebody else so i can go here ah, where is 50 there we go and i can add another 50 for somebody else if i had written that this with anyone else so you can add unlimited collaborators to your track you can change the splits anytime so also it's really good for privacy and so that there's no drama uh, the collaborators can only see their own percentages what they're getting because otherwise drama in in a band your collaborators do need to have a district account one of these lovely things uh, but they get 50 percent off discount so it's only like 10 bucks or something so if your collaborator is late signing up it doesn't mean that your release is going to be late and also if they never sign up then you can either keep the percentages for yourself or you can do it the calculation somewhere else and also district kid never takes a cut so remember that so you get all your hundred percent of your money it's just a really easy tool like as an independent artist we don't have money to pay for accountants we can actually just do it here and that's why it's super fast way to do that so i'm really love it i love this i love this love it love it love it if you want to check out district kid and also splits then go to the link down below and more info there. Check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe. Please hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time I post. Usually I always post all my Patreon followers here, but in this mixing course, I am now thanking all my Patreons in the info box down below. If you want to be part of that family where I do weekly live stream Q and A's, I give feedback, I give free stuff, presets and templates. If you want to be part of that all and amazing community, then please check out the link also down below. Also, remember, I have merch, so check that out as well down below. Have a very lovely day and I'll see you next Sunday because I post every single Sunday. Bye!